What the heck is going on over there? Can we jump over this gap? Oh my gosh. Yo, no! <laughs> what is up everyone and welcome back to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Last episode, we headed back to school and I think ended up going on a date with one of our teachers. Yeah, it sounds pretty weird, but trust me, that definitely happened. But today, we are actually at the east of Mezagoza, and we're heading on to face the first Titan Pokemon. But before we get into the action, I have another very important comment question of the day, and it is regarding the length of these episodes. So let me know in the comments below, how long do you prefer? Because I've been thinking of making them a bit shorter, maybe around like 10 minutes less, so I feel that making them shorter might help me kind of focus on just doing one objective per episode instead of just wandering around the whole map and jumping between areas. So today we're going to be focusing on exploring everything here in Area 3 and taking on the Stony Cliff Titan. So if you guys are excited, make sure to smash that like button and I hope you enjoy this episode. Now, last time we left off, as I tragically fell down a cliff somewhere around here, I kind of want to try to make that jump again. Like, I know I'm probably going to fail, but... Oh my gosh. The Clan of Shinx. Okay, yeah, I don't know if we're going to make that, but I'm really curious. What the heck is up with that glowing sword? Or whatever that is. I guess we'll have to wait until we have a Koraidon upgrade. By that, I mean we're able to climb or fly. But speaking of fly, look at this guy! Or gal. Can't really tell. Because the hat was covering her face. Okay, it's Alicia, the musician! Trainer class that you don't see too often. I'm pretty sure there are musicians in like Pokemon Black and White though, because I remember other people having guitars. But I don't think that the musician has ever looked like a country singer. So, at least there's that uniqueness to Alicia here. Hey, we made it to the Pokemon Center! Do you even, even realize we were that close? And I have been having some nice battles. Four trainers, but we have to defeat six. Dang it. Like I was saying though, it is very easy to find trainers, or at least a lot easier than... Okay? Oh, hey. Arvin! From what I gather, the Stony Cliff Titan likes to lurk somewhere in this rocky area. I had a look around, but I couldn't find any trace of it. Maybe it's way up high on a cliff or something? Nah, that's impossible. I don't think it'd be hiding somewhere that tricky. So don't go falling off any cliffs or anything trying to... Okay, it's a little too late for that, bro. Maybe just give your map app a look if you're feeling stumped. It's pretty handy. Thank you for the great tip, as always, Arvin. As I was saying, though, it's a lot easier to find trainers when you're on the main path, but this guy's got a black text box, which I'm pretty sure means that he's too strong for us right now. But then again... We fought a trainer with a regular white text box before, and they ended up being too strong too. So, sometimes that can be deceiving, but I'm not going to risk anything. A uh, couple of new Pokemon in this area, though. Might be because we actually entered a new section of the South Province. I'm just making sure to look at every little critter, because you never know when you might find a shiny in this game. I don't even know if I'm heading back towards the Pokemon Center at this point. Considering this is Area 3 though, I think I'm on the right track. Or maybe not, because I definitely don't remember there being a TM over here. And oh my gosh, it's a claw! Yo, what the heck? Why did it have an exclamation mark? That's a little scary, man. I'm just gonna ignore you and keep grabbing all these items and... I guess running into Nackley. And I guess I could actually catch one of these cloths. It is the first one that we run into. And this might actually be where we were earlier. Wait. Oh, uh, never mind. We haven't actually fought this lady, so I don't even know at this point. So let's just fight Andrea the model and her little Flabebe. And afterwards, I'll probably just fly to the Pokemon Center so we don't have to deal with this maze. I don't even know if this place is actually that confusing or I just suck at navigating it, but... At least Wooper is able to navigate through pretty much any fairy type that gets in its way. And we're going to be learning the Slam! I keep forgetting that catching Pokemon also gives XP, so 
Maybe I should be catching more of these random little ones from other generations. Just because they're old doesn't mean they're not cool anymore. Okay, no, this was definitely not the part that we were at earlier. Unless this leads back over to it? Makuhita Sweat? What? That might just be the weirdest item that we've picked up from the Pokemon so far. And a Hasty Mint! Yo, that's actually pretty good! Well, I don't know actually what Hasty Nature boosts and lowers, but just the fact that we got a Mint is nice. And there's yet another TM that we already had. Uh, I shouldn't have jumped off because there was actually one more trainer over there, but I don't know if it counts for the proper area. And we got some ruins down here. Oh, that means we've got Gimme Ghouls. Yes, Gimme Gimme Coins, please. I'm trying to get that evolution for sure. Like if we can actually collect 999 coins before the end, that is definitely a Pokemon that I would want to use on my team. But it uh, doesn't look like there is much else going on here. So I'm just going to open up the map and go back to the Pokemon Center. South Province Area 3. Okay, so it is Area 3. Which means that that kid would have actually counted for the challenge. But where the heck was he? Now I totally lost him. Oh, okay. Of course. And we need just one more trainer. Well, at least there's another claw. Which I did say I wanted to try and catch. So here's our chance. And Phoebe actually has Nuzzle, which is guaranteed to paralyze the opponent, I believe. Even though it doesn't do the most damage. So I'm basically just using this to... Get the paralysis. I'm kind of scared to go for a low kick because Clock does look pretty heavy, but not heavy enough, thankfully. And because it's still paralyzed, I'm pretty sure we should be able to catch it here. Just for good measure, I'll go for another Great Ball because Clock seems like it would have a slightly higher catch rate than some of the other Pokemon we've run into. Or not. And at level 15, Phoebe's going to be learning Dig. I got three electric moves. I feel like I should get rid of one of them at least at this point. And into the decks you go! The ambush Pokemon! Cloth hangs upside down from cliffs waiting for prey, but it can't remain in this position for long because the blood rushes to its head. <laughs> That's hilarious. I think we're gonna be experiencing just that as we take on our first Titan Pokemon. I don't even know how close we are. Oh, actually, we're a lot closer than I thought. I can't find that kid I was trying to battle earlier, so this graffiti tagger will have to do. I think my next work shall be a portrait of you. Collapsed in defeat, but we're just gonna ignore that she said that last part. Irene here though is gonna have a Fido. Totally should have left off or let off with Hooper, but we still have two more Super Fangs, so this is fine. What the frick are you even tagging out here in the cliffs? Like literally the side of the rock? I mean, I guess that's better than like vandalizing a building, I suppose. A max potion? That is so unnecessary this early in the game, but I'll take it, I guess. And there's one last item down here, another hyper potion. Dude, we are getting like way too good of potions for how early we are in the game, I feel. Anyway, let us now head back to the Pokemon Center. Please tell me, yes, we've defeated six trainers and we get a Shell Bell. Not bad. Not what I was expecting though, but another challenge complete. I suppose now we can finally move on to the Titan Pokemon, Cloth. And there's actually a little bit more info we can read about it here too. Witnesses claim they've seen a giant stone moving on its own in the South Province, and the stone has big swiveling eye stalks. Perhaps it's a titan camouflaging itself to prey. Yeah, we know exactly what it is. So let's set that as our destination and head on over there. This area looks so much cooler during the daytime. This whole episode, we've kind of been exploring it in the dark, but now that the sun has finally come out, like, I love how vibrant and colorful it is. And apparently some trainers have respawned too? Or did I really not notice that kid earlier? I don't know, maybe because it's like a different day, new trainers appeared. But I guess we might as well head to that tower straight in front of us. And we can probably jump from there to where the Titan is. I also want to take on another Gimme Ghoul because we did finally catch one in the last episode. 
but it was only level five. And we're gonna need a lot more coins if we wanna evolve it eventually. Or we could actually catch this one since the first one that I caught not only was pretty low level, but I think also had a pretty bad nature for Gimme Ghoul especially. But man, these ladders are pretty dang long. At least we can like jump right off and yes, we do have another Gimme Ghoul chest, but also a TM for Metronome. Didn't even know that was a TM. I don't know if that's like new here in Scarlet and Violet, but uh, once again, I've got Cheese leading the squad, which is definitely not the best against Gimme Ghoul. Since it's a ghost type, we literally can't do anything to it. But this one here is at level 10. Not too much higher than the one we fought last time. And we get the static on it. Let's go. The repeat ball should work better than before. Since it's the best at catching Pokemon you've already caught before. Well, so much for that. Fine, regular Pokeball it is. It worked out the last time, so who knows? Maybe it'll work out again? What the heck, man? What is this? Oh, we got 60 Gimme Cool coins this time around. Nice. And like I said, we can definitely jump off from here and maybe get to the Titan a little bit easier. Well, I should have checked if there was... Oh, we probably could have landed on that rock up there, but I'm not really sure if there would have been anything special. There is a special Pokeball, though. We got a Heal Ball for the first time. And a few more Pokemon that I should probably catch so we can start filling up the decks. Oh my god. Oh, <laughs> That was kind of like a jump scare moment. I did not expect Cloth to just be hanging out right there. Pun definitely intended. What happens if we like try to jump at it from the cliff on top of it? I'm gonna try to not step too close to it. Oh, we got a crab party over here, okay. Cue the rave music. No, not yet. I'm gonna wait for the rave to actually start, which is when we Take on the Titan Claw. This is our destination. Gotta be something around here, right? Oh yeah. Always explore. And you get yourself Snarl. Wait, there's more up here. What the heck? Why am I sliding? That was like the least steep slope ever. And yet somehow Koraidon... Oh my god, now I can't even get this Pokeball? What is going on? Hold up. That's gotta be a glitch, right? Let me just get off for a second. Excuse me? I really can't grab this Pokeball. What? I'm so confused. I'm like spamming A and doing everything. But no, I just, I can't grab it. Okay. Where the heck is Cloth though? Oh gosh, okay. That was scary. Pretty sure it's right below us. Yeah. Don't mind if I drop in. Oh my gosh. Uh, I thought maybe that would trigger the battle. Apparently not. <laughs> Where is it going? Wait, excuse me? Is it supposed to do that? I think it is actually. Like when you approach it, it tries to hide on the other side of the rock. So maybe I like sequence broke a little bit by trying to approach it directly. Oh my gosh, what the heck? Yo, there's a guinea ghoul here I can't get either. What the heck? Are you serious? Why can't I interact with anything? Did I like break my game? No way. Let me test it with this item over here. If I can make it. Oh, nice. Got an iron. So at least now I know my game's not broken. And it was just that Pokeball I couldn't grab. And also the Gimme Ghoul for whatever reason. But now where the heck am I? All the way back at the bottom is where. Oh, man. I don't want to be down here. It's a freaking maze and I keep getting lost. Maybe getting lost was a good thing because we finally found the little grasshopper. Oh, no, you're not getting away from me, buddy. I've been wanting to catch one of yous for a minute now. Basically since I saw it in Cortondo for the first time. I really, really want to catch one of these guys. Actually, even further back since I saw the Pokedex leaks. Like, this is one of the Pokemon that I was most interested in. And at half health, maybe we'll be able to catch it? I mean, it's a bug. Like, you're not usually the hardest to catch, right? Nice! Nimble has been caught! You might notice I actually have Mary on the team. That's because we're taking on the Rock Titan. I thought maybe a Grass type would be good, but she's only at level eight. So I don't think we're actually gonna end up using Smoliv in the battle, but Mac and Cheese are gonna be learning Bullet Seed. Wait, who's learning Play Rough? Oh, finally, Fido's learning a fairy move. Took you long enough, dude. Like seriously, you didn't learn a single other 
fairy move until play rough. At least it's a really strong one. But Nimble here can jump over 30 feet using the strength of its legs. And its evolution is actually the first ever bug and dark type, which is why I've wanted another one for the Dex. Number 14. I really don't get the Pokedex order in this game. Feels like it's almost randomly generated. Cause I actually had a look at the official full Pokedex and I think like Dunsparce is the first Pokemon right after the starters. Which makes no sense to me why Dunsparce is that early in the decks. Like, I haven't even seen one yet. You'd think the regional decks would be ordered by like the order that you encounter the Pokemon in, but nope. I'm gonna try to go for another Nimble. Hopefully with a better nature too, because this is one I actually do want to use. Potentially on the final squad, depending on how strong it ends up being. Or like how much we use it in all the challenges. Okay, this one's feisty too, breaking out of the first ball. That's usually a good sign that it's going to be a strong Pokemon. It's not really a sign of anything. That's just my own personal thing. Like, I feel that because it's feisty, it means that it's going to be worth catching. Maybe the netball is what we really needed. Oh my god, critical capture too? Okay, wasn't expecting that. But I feel like it's a sign. This has to be our next team member now. And I shall name you... Kiddo! I don't really have a specific reason why, I just like the name I suppose. But I'm not gonna add you just yet because we're gonna go fight Cloth and I'm pretty sure you're just gonna get destroyed if we send you into battle, so... Let's head back to the Stony Titan's den and... What the heck? Oh my goodness. I saw like a summoning circle but then it just disappeared. Or dispersed? I don't really know what just happened there, but I also don't want to know. That was kind of creepy. Oh my god, a rare bone, yo. I think you can sell those. I didn't really fully read, but bro, there's another freaking summoning circle of skiddos. What are you guys doing? What is that? <laughs> and why is there like a single rock salt in the middle of them? I just realized that adds on to the whole idea of it being a summoning circle, because like salt is seen as like a spiritual thing. But I suppose it usually scares away spirits, not draws them in. So maybe it's a reverse summoning circle. Anyway, we finally made it back to Cloth. What you looking at? Oh my God. That's some crazy hops. Jeez, that scream was scary too. Straight up sounded like a dinosaur. And I still have mac and cheese up first. Though, I wonder if Super Fang works on even a Titan. I feel like it wouldn't. Bro, there is no way that should be allowed. What? That's so OP against a Titan. Like, yeah, that should not be a thing. I really like that cry. It's almost like Godzilla-like. Which I guess it is a sort of Kaiju, right? Kaiju just means giant monster. So, it does fit the Titan Pokemon. That makes me wonder what they're actually called in Japanese. Maybe it is something like Kaiju instead of Titan. But, you knocked it down to red HP, and that means it is gonna scurry away and leave behind a Growlithe. What the heck? What are you doing here, man? Why do you almost look shiny? Pretty sure it's just the lighting. Yeah, that's not a shiny. Let me go ahead and revive Mac and Cheese because that Super Fang seemed really OP considering how much HP Cloth had. And I'm not really sure if it's going to be back at full health. I'm not even sure where the heck it went. I know that it like crawled away along the wall. So maybe it's up this way at the very tippy top. Oh my gosh. Stop sliding down, Koraidon, please. Oh, now I can grab the item at the top? That's random. Seriously, where did this thing go? I don't even see it around. I do see an item up there and a TM all the way on that cliff, but I don't think we can reach it just yet until we have the climbing power. Oh my gosh, okay. Oh wait, what? Why are you just here now? I could have sworn like two seconds ago he wasn't there. Or maybe I didn't look properly. I don't really know, but... Whoa. That's a powerful rock smash. Oh my gosh. What is happening? The Titan Cloth began eating something? 
And Arvin just pops it out of nowhere. Orange, you found it. And that thing's the Stony Cliff Titan? No cloth has got any business being that big. Is it going to be even stronger now after eating those herbs? Probably, I don't know. You're the one that was talking up these herbs being like some kind of ultra steroid that could even make you immortal. Okay. Cloth is going Super Saiyan. And this is actually a double battle with uh, Arvin. Or I guess it's called a tag battle, technically. Well, this is looking a little rough. Shelter, let's serve up a helping up defeat. And I'm gonna serve up my Super Fang, which is super strong. But not as strong as the first time. That only took about a quarter of its health, maybe even a little bit less. What the heck? Why are you going for... Okay, whatever. I guess we'll go Bullet Seed then, since uh, Shelter used... Leer, lowering Cloth's defense. That means Bullet Seed will do more damage since it's a physical move. And Super Fang always does half, so I feel that Bullet Seed is better to go for. Not when it hits only twice, though. That's, you know, leaving a little bit to be desired. Oh my god. I forgot this is Cloth's ability. We should have took it out when we had the chance. Oh, this is not going to end well. Anger Shell basically gives the Pokemon the same effects as the move Shell Smash, which raises attack, special attack, and speed sharply, except when its HP drops to half. But that means that its defenses are dropped, so Bullet Seed will be doing even more damage. And if we can hit more than twice, we might even finish it. No, I think we just hit, yeah, three times. But it's not the red health. Actually, Shelter might just finish it. Okay, let's go, Arvin. You actually did something, my guy. You love to see it. Not the cloth dying. That's pretty tragic, but... <gasps> oh, that is so cute. Mac and cheese. I love you. Everybody gets some XP. And RuPaul's gonna learn low sweep. Alright, look at my little buddy coming through like a chip. I gotta give it to you. I was not expecting Shelter to do much, but you actually got the killing blow. Props for that, man. Especially with the little Shelter. They don't usually do much. I bet somewhere in here there's more of that Urban Mystica the Titan was eating. Quick, let's have a look around before it comes back. I'm getting some Pokemon Legends Arceus vibes all of a sudden. Watch your step. It's pretty dark. Oh yeah, it reminds me of when we were making the origin ball. I forget what it was, but we were gathering some kind of like ore that would glow red, I'm pretty sure. And the Urban Mystica also happens to glow, but a little bit more pink. This is one of the Urban Mystica. It's exactly how it looked in the book. Full HD and in color too. You got the sweet Urban Mystica. Yes! We actually found one! And it's all thanks to you, Orange. Now then, let's see. What does the book have to say? The Sweet Herba Mystica is good for gut health and that it helps aid digestion. It says it's a great for stomach aches too, or when you want to stimulate the old appetite. Okay. Now, if I can just get him to eat some. Ooh. All right, now it's my turn to show off what I can do. You're about to get a taste of my cooking. If it's as good as you're battling, then we're in for a treat. Here you go. An Arvin original sandwich packed full of herbs. And I'll even give you a badge. You know, as a thank you for taking on that Titan Pokemon. I call it a Titan badge. Made it myself using a replica of the gym badges, see? So it's gonna look real crappy. Maybe not. Maybe Arvin's actually, you know, good at designing stuff. Wait, is that it right there? I can't even tell what that is. It's so freaking tiny. Oh, this is so wholesome. Just having a little sandwich time with Arvin. And Cory too! Ugh, what's up with that thing? It just comes out of its ball on its own whenever it wants? Yeah, that's how legendary Pokemon be sometimes. Can't control him, man. Hey, now. That's not for you. 
It's fine, man. Yeah, why the heck wouldn't I? <laughs> you can actually choose to be selfish? No, come on. This is a pretty big sandwich. I'm sure we could just split it. Or not. Hey, I went through all that trouble and you just give it away? I hope you realize that's all there was. So now there's none for you. That's fine. Oh, come on. Now you're making me feel like a jerk. I mean, you kind of are, bro. If the sandwich really does, or I guess the herb does all that stuff you mentioned, then it'd probably be much better for... What I done? Who can dash now? Wh hey, is it me or has this thing sort of powered up somehow? Well, you talked up the Herba Mystica, like of course it's gonna do something. I can't believe it! The power of these herbs really is worth guarding! Now how do we get some more? If they had that big effect on a Pokemon, then I bet... Ooh, you wanna use it on people, huh? I bet it'll come in super handy for that treasure hunt we've got. Sure. Yep, that's what I bet. Well, you've both filled your bellies with some of my legendary sandwiches. Guess it's time to tidy everything up. Oh, don't worry about helping. After battling the Titan, you've earned a break. Just leave this all to me, though I'd be much obliged if you'd get a start on searching out the remaining four Herba Mystica. I got you, dude. Especially if it's going to keep giving Cory more power-ups. I want to get the climbing one especially so we can actually explore the whole region. I really owe you. Who? Me? Uh-oh. Why is Arvin being sussed right now? Oh, no, no, no. Really? You can come out now. You know, I was about to say when he mentioned how he wants to use the Herba Mystica for more than just Pokemon, that was a little bit suspicious. Oh, goodness. Who's this? Professor Sada! I detect that Koraidon has regained some of its original power. It seems it will now be able to dash at high speeds while you're riding upon it. I didn't even know that Goraidon had this upgrade. That's pretty cool. If you strike a tree while dashing, Pokemon lurking on the branches will fall down too. Well, I definitely could have used that a long time ago when we found that shiny Pachirisu, but I suppose it's better late than never. And now, you can wrap up this episode. Go forth, journey, and take good care of Goraidon for me. Will do, Professor. And I was originally going to end off the episode here, but considering how long it is after editing, I think we can spare a few more minutes of exploring, especially now that we have our first upgrade for Goraidon, and I believe we can activate it with the left stick! Oh my gosh! Right into a horde of Skittos! That's definitely not what I was aiming for, but I thought we might be able to go back into the cave where we caught stone titan but apparently not which makes me wonder if we can actually catch the titan pokemon would be hilarious to use a giant cloth in battle but i don't know if that's really a thing or not i feel like i remember reading about alpha pokemon being in the game and titan pokemon they're pretty similar what were the really really giant pokemon in legends called i guess the nobles I kind of feel like the Titans and the Nobles might be distantly related. And maybe we'll find out later on in the playthrough. I definitely want to know more about what the heck is going on with Arvin. Dude was being hella sneaky at the end there. Talking to like a ghost or something. I mean, obviously it was a Pokemon. But what Pokemon he was talking to is the real mystery. Now this laddie's actually got two Pokemon on our team. Second one up being Murkrow. About to get murked by Luma, who I brought back onto the team. I'm still kind of struggling to decide what the main members that I want to train up are, but considering the next gym is going to be grass type, unless we take on the team star base first, but either way, training up Luma is not a bad idea. Or Kiddo, the newly caught grasshopper. Both of those are going to be strong against uh, grass type. I mean, even Charcadet, which we caught last episode, is going to be pretty good. But, I don't know which form to go for. I know that because I'm playing Pokemon Scarlet, it makes sense to go Armor Rouge. But it would be interesting to like, 
do a co-op episode and trade, or however it is that it evolves, I'm not really sure, but it only evolves into Sarah Ledge in Pokemon Violet, so I think if you go to another person's game with the co-op function, you can evolve it into its other form. So that might be coming up later on. I do want to show off more of the co-op, but I also want to wrap up exploring this whole area. What the heck? No exit? You mean like this way? I mean, even if it's a dead end, there's got to be something, right? I keep forgetting we have our speed boost now. Oh my gosh. Oh, no, no, no. I went too fast. Dang it. No. Let's try this again and not fall off the edge this time. Oh, wait. Can I even go up there to that Terra Crystal? I don't think you can get there normally or behind this tree. What the frick? But if you guys remember last episode, I showed off a little bit of a trick that you can do by hopping backwards. And I wonder if we can put it to use here. Oh, never mind. <laughs> we could just hop up normally over this way. Wait, what the frick? Oh my god. Goraidon? Please get up. Seriously. What the heck? That did not need to be so complicated. And this Terra Raid is going to be a Shroomish that I believe is rock type? I don't know what that symbol is. It's probably rock or ground, but come on, Young Goose. Are you serious right now? Okay, I think here we can actually put the backwards jump to the test. If I can do it properly, that is. Come on. Ugh. Get up there, Koraidon. Are you serious? Oh, wait. Oh my gosh, it's working. Or not. Because, well, oh my. Well, that's one way to get up. <laughs> Thanks for the boost, Makuhita. Appreciate that, dude. We can get on up to, uh, really? Bro, I know it's raining, but like, this is not that big of a jump. Oh my, okay. We made it and we get fire spin, great. What the heck is that? Is that a team star base? What if we just jump in from up here? Can I reach? Oh my gosh, yo, we made it. <gasps> oh, that is amazing. What? What is happening? Back up, kid! You can't just casually waltz in here like you're one of us stars that run the joint! If you want in, ring the bell over by the entrance and storm the base like a decent person! <laughs> really? Wow. You try to be a little sneaky and that's how the game rewards you. Awesome. <laughs> Why did they make it so easy to just hop in there then? I feel like they should have made their fence, like, taller or something. Well, I guess we're not gonna be taking on the star base today. Probably better to save it for the next episode anyway, which is what I was talking at the beginning of the episode. Let me know again, what do you guys think about the length of these, and if we should maybe make them slightly shorter, like not that much shorter, around 30 minutes-ish, but we focus on, like, one main thing per episode. Bro, what is this? Squad? I don't know why there's a Shuppet there. Seems that uh, one of these things is not like the others. But looks like we made it to the next town. And that windmill's looking a little funky. So we're not quite going to head in just yet. Uh, let's just explore this last bit of the canyon that's remaining. It's actually a lot down here. But mainly Pokemon that we already caught, but I'm mostly here for the items. Like Icy Wind. Not bad. And it looks like there's another glowing Terra Pokemon over there. Hopefully it's something better than... <gasps> what? A Dunsparce? Yo! What the heck? It's so much bigger than I thought, too. Well, I suppose this is kind of a spoiler, but at this point I'm sure most of you guys know, Dunsparce actually has a new evolution in Gen 9. So I am definitely trying to catch this guy. First, we gotta take it down, though, and it's a poison type, which, uh, yeah, Kiddo doesn't really have anything too great against that. But we do have Whoopi, so let's skedaddle! The poison crystal hat actually looks so cool. I love that. I haven't checked what Terrastalize Whoopi has. I think it said it right there, but I wasn't paying attention. Oh, come on. Okay, I thought we got fully paralyzed that turn, but we're good. And actually, the Mudshot did not do that much damage, so let's... Terrastalize! Oh no, we're Poison-type Terrastal! Well, I guess that'll at least make us resist the Dunsparce's hits. As much as I love 
the effects for terrestrializing, I will say the animation takes too damn long. And that's probably the main reason why I haven't been using it as much as I should throughout this playthrough. Then again, editing makes it much more tolerable, so you're welcome. Oh my goodness, that flail freaking hurt. Please tell me that's enough. We got it down to red. The terrestrializing should break. Yes, Shatter Dunn's boss. And now is our chance to catch it. I don't know if a regular Pokeball will do it. We do have a Luxury Ball, actually. Dunsparce is a pretty luxurious Pokemon, if I do say so myself. Oh, yes! It's gonna work out! Yo, the Luxury Ball's looking even nicer than it did in past games because of the shading here in this gen. Kind of looked like sparkly. It creates mazes in dark locations. When spotted, it flees into the ground by digging with its tail. I have no idea if I'm gonna end up using it, like, permanently, but I definitely want to see its evolution at least, so I shall call you Dudley! And for now, you'll go to the PC. But not before getting registered in the decks! Wait, what? I could have sworn Dunsparce was, like, second in the decks. Did the leaks lie? Or not lie, but I guess they didn't have the full information, because I remember seeing Dunsparce was, like, very early on after Lechonk, or, like, right after the starter Pokémon. Now I'm even more confused how they organized the decks in this gen. I don't know, man. Whatever. We got Dunsparce, we got a TM for Charm, and I'm pretty sure that is about everything that is in this area. Nope, spoke too soon. We got a Brock Terra Shard. What the heck is that? On rare occasions, these shards form when a Terra Pokemon falls in battle and its Terra Jewel shatters. What do you do with them? You can use it or give it to a Pokemon but it won't have any effect. I just realized I've never given any of my Pokemon held items. Like I bought this Mystic Water just for Quaxly and never freaking used it. So yay for me for getting things. I'll probably do it in between episodes cause I can't be bothered right now. I also can't figure out how the heck to get out of here. My goodness, just noticed another TM down here for Bulldoze. Yeah, that's actually a pretty good one. And that's not all because I don't believe we've been through this little cave, and there's yet another TM! What the heck? But now, for real though, we are gonna wrap up this episode, so I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Next time, we will be taking on our second gym, or perhaps the Team Star base, or perhaps even both in one episode. You'll have to stay tuned to find out. So hit that like button if you enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next episode.